Hand on heart, I believe that Suki Waterhouse is the British Taylor Swift. Let me explain. <laughs> so who is Suki Waterhouse? Well, chat, let me tell you. She is a model. She is an actress. She is a jewelry business owner with Pop and Suki. She never has a purse with her and always carries loads of items with her. She is a meme queen. And she is dating Batman. Suki Warhouse is a singer who I think has something extra special about her. And ever since I first listened to her music, I think she was a cut above other artists who have kind of had a career outside of music before transitioning across. And the interesting thing about Suki is you go back to, I believe, 2016 to find her first EP, which was called Brutally, or her first song, which was called Brutally. So I'm not sure how much was put into this release. It was obviously a long time ago, but it feels like she's always had an authentic love of music. She's not someone who is kind of working with a PR company saying, oh, what can I do now to, to keep my audience of followers engaged? She's always clearly had an interest in music, but never quite had the time to commit to it. But since 2019, she started taking her music more seriously. And then one of her songs, Good Looking, during lockdown went massively viral on TikTok. And I'm going to justify why I think she might be, she might be the next massive artist, especially out of the UK, to explode in popularity the way we're seeing with Joe Keery, aka Joe. Did, Did you, you know, know that Joe Keery makes, makes music? music? That's, That's right, Steve, Steve Harrington, Harrington not only he's not fighting, fighting zombies, zombies in, in the upside, upside down, down and just having him peck. I think I did it wrong. So let's find out a little bit about Suki. This is her 24 hours with Vogue. Hey Vogue, it's Suki. Come join me for a day while I get ready to play the Fonda tonight. Ah! Okay, let's go in. <laughs> she is such a vibe. I feel like she there. embodies the chaotic pop girly energy. Relatability is not something that you would expect to be really important with a massive pop star. But I think more and more now, when you have social media and you have artists directly talking to fans, in the way that Suki always does on her Twitter, she replies to her fan accounts in hilarious ways. I think it's super important. And Suki, despite everything about her life, seems very relatable and very down to earth. We've been asked to, to stick to a 70s theme, which is, which is gonna be- Very Daisy Jones, very on brand. The jackets get at this point. What do you think? You like it? That's very Macklemore. I'm obsessed. Macklemore. Getting like a little, a little hungry. I'm just gonna eat like a little, a little bit of mashed potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes are the best. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're going to the fondant. Why, why did the these thing. like model girls always just eat but really weird things like cold baked beans out, out of the can or, or mashed potatoes? That's a, that's a model girl thing, isn't it? Pickles out of the jar. Eating pickles out of the jar. Suki Waterhouse is the kind of girl who definitely eats pickles out of the jar. This is like by far the biggest place that I think I've ever performed at. Ever. She's giving me like Alice in Wonderland vibes now. Suki in gig venue. The tour bus. This is where we've been living for the last. Do you think she has a PS5 on the tour bus chat? I feel like she probably has more of a Nintendo Switch. I, I'd have her down more as an Animal Crossing. No, sorry, Nintendo DS. I know she likes Nintendo DS because she was encouraging fans to literally film her gigs on Nintendo DSs. This is more of the, uh, the boy area. <laughs> boy area. It kind of, I was trying to, I was going to be like, oh, it doesn't smell funny, but it actually does smell quite funny. <laughs> this is me as bunk. Link's effect. Bunk. See, now I'm getting nervous. I was all like, oh, yeah, and now I'm like, <gasps> This is so pre-gig energy. It's funny, you know, whether you're playing to 100,000 people or 100, this is always what happens before gigs. I've worked with a lot of bands. You're kind of like breezy for a bit, and then you do your sound check, you get towards actual show and doors open, and you suddenly feel sick. Hey, after seeing it now and now, I'm definitely getting nervous. Yeah, we're gonna go and do sound check and, and make sure that we uh, sound okay. <laughs> this is pretty, <laughs> yeah. Is usually the goal of, of soundtrack. Let's go. <laughs> I feel like she is a daily vlogger at heart. We need Suki Waterhouse vlogs. Yeah, Have they just walked into a 1960s it will diner? It will Does the 1960s, 70s just follow Suki Waterhouse around? Does she just walk into somewhere and it becomes retro? What draws me to music is I have to keep needling myself for an answer. 
when I want to write a song is usually when I've run out of like sociably acceptable <laughs> amounts of talking to like a friend or even yeah. a therapist about someone. We will get to her lyrics in a little bit, but I think Suki's lyrics really set her apart. She's such a vivid songwriter and poet. The way she has of phrasing relationships and people and, and characterizing people, they all feel like fairy tales in her songs. Big crowd. So that's a little of a bit of an introduction to Suki Waterhouse, the person. Let's hear her music. This is the big one, good looking. It's the first one I heard as well. I was bewitched by this song the first time I heard it. It's, it's so ethereal. It reminds me of Alexandra Savia, who's worked with Alex Turner. It reminds me a bit of Beach House. It is one of the best dream pop anthems I've ever heard. And there's that lyricism, the skyline falls as I try to make sense of it all. I thought I'd uncovered your secrets, but turns out there's more. It's kind of a, such a vivid picture of being in love with someone. And she, she gives away enough to make the song compelling, but not so much that it feels obvious and lacking in the abstraction that makes a piece of music really captivating and make you want to listen more to try and understand it. Side note, I have no idea what the fuck happened when they were filming this video, but I think she accidentally cut herself on the rotating fan on the ceiling of their New York apartment they were staying in, and they just kept filming, and my god. This video does teeter between safe for work and not safe for work, but you know. Yeah, the lyric is, play casino holes of my eyeballs, roll the dice on my thighs. It's, it's such beautiful imagery. This video is now a part of my skincare routine, thank you. Yeah, Suki, drop the skincare routine, please. So here is Suki Waterhouse's dream pop number, good looking. And it shows that she can do the kind of really ethereal, wavy, beautiful, synthy pop. But if you're looking for someone who you're going to compare to Taylor Swift, you need a varied repertoire. And this year, she dropped a song called Oh My God, which just shows that she can do the kind of bad girl pop energy as well. It's just such a brilliant pop song. This isn't dream pop anymore, it's like pure pop. And this is Suki showing that she can actually make kind of chart friendly pop music comfortably, but with her voice being so distinctive and the lyrics having a bit more depth to them, there's so much substance there that I think could really set her apart. And already has. There's a lot of kind of classic 70s, 80s in her. I think Blondie is probably a big influence for her. And I don't really see any other artists who are the size that she is with the talent and the artistic vision she is. Because what people don't appreciate about people like Suki Waterhouse, Cara Delevingne, Anya Taylor-Joy, they have to have such a strong creative vision. The, these are like modern day muses. They have to have such a clear vision of how to become iconic and how to almost transcend, uh, you know, just basic art and ideas. You have to become a bit ethereal. And obviously they're working with the industry's top designers, but it's it's coming it's coming from the models. It's coming from them, all these people. And Suki, case in point, I think the creative vision behind her music, it comes from her. I, I always wonder with this lyric, she's singing my baby's no good for me. She was pregnant at the time and I do wonder like whether she was reflecting on that at all or whether it's just like baby is in a, a partner. Being pregnant is scary. We've got the dream pop number with good looking and now we've got the kind of big chart pop energy with oh my god. But one of my favourite songs by her that again shows that huge depth is called Joanna. And this is just straight alternative rock. There's such a, a dark and brooding edge to it. And again, the the depth in this song is crazy to me. It's like you, you listen to this and you wouldn't even care that she's had a successful career before music because any musician writes a song like this and they deserve a Grammy. They deserve a Brit. They deserve platinum and all the awards. There's just so much genuine emotion in her voice. And each song, it feels like there's an anchored story behind it. It doesn't feel like she's sat in a room with a team of songwriters to make up a story that never happened. It feels like she's gone through experiences that you want to know about that are genuinely compelling. 
and she has a way of converting those experiences with a bit of fantasy and a bit of whimsy into incredible songs. I want to meet the real Joanna. Suki Waterhouse cosplaying as Agent Smith from The Matrix. Love to see it. Hey, she's got moves. Good Suki Waterhouse song. I have it on good authority that uh, Moves was written about Kane Richard of the band Moore. Cut to interview with him. <laughs> I think you guys know Suki Waterhouse. Do you like her music as well? Definitely. Definitely. It's about us, actually. <laughs> about you. Pretty sure the whole album is about Kane. Moves is about. Do some of your dance moves. Are you, are you in love with Paul Moves is about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. Uh, I tagged Suki in that video and she said lol. So, confirmed. So, there you go. You've got the kind of alt rock number to go with the chart pop anthem and the dream pop anthem can we just get the quiet sad girl ballad to top it all off yes we can this song is called coolest place in the world and man it just kind of makes your your heart beat slow and the hairs on the back of your neck stand up suki does the tender moments so well and i can't believe the same artist that Released, oh my god, released this. You appeal to a girl like me. Humans fuck up more than anyone else. I've always loved that lyric, humans fuck up more than anyone. And then that line, relatable, about being in love with four people. And, and then maybe a window into the life she led as a young model. And the people you'd just be around and fall in love with. I just think anywhere that you are. Place in the world, place. What a line for a sad love song. I just think anywhere that you are, coolest place in the world. That's just what it's like when you fancy someone. It's like you could literally be sitting in a Burger King and it would feel like the Ritz because you're with that person and you don't care. And when I talk about the artistic vision that you, you need to be a pop star, even her imagery, her, her wardrobe, her energy, her body language in each of these different videos to fit the different vibes of the different songs, it's incredible how quickly she can step out of one caricature or character into another. And that's why I genuinely think comparing her to someone like a Taylor Swift isn't as outrageous or hyperbolic as it might seem at first glance. And that brings us up to her most recent single, which is called My Fun. It came out a day ago. And again, it's totally different. It's totally different. It's kind of got a psychedelic Beatles vibe to it. The music video reminds me a bit of Mighty Boosh. It's such a catchy song, that little drum beat in the background. Heavy, it makes you feel like you're going on a holiday in summer. Seeing those crystal blue waves by the seaside. What's really weird about this song is it reminds me of my friend's mole face, this song, The Man With Four Arms and One Leg, even with the pan flute. Every different song you hear from her, her voice makes it so distinctly Suki as well. You, you have some singers like that. Billie Eilish is one of them. I think Dua Lipa has a really distinctive voice as well, Lana Del Rey. You hear one bar of it and you're like, yep, yeah, instantly them. So why am I saying Suki Waterhouse is the next Taylor Swift? What does that actually mean? Because obviously she doesn't really sound anything like Taylor. Her music is not just pop. I'm obviously, Taylor's music isn't just pop either, but Suki, it feels like some of her songs are a lot more niche than Taylor's is what I mean. What I mean when I say that I think Suki Waterhouse is the British Taylor Swift is you look at her Spotify right now and she has 9 million monthly listeners, okay? I genuinely believe by the end of this year or maybe midway through 2025, that number will be like 50 million. I just feel like she's got everything in the toolbox to become the huge pop star, the huge alternative pop star from the UK. And, and her music does feel indie at times. It feels alt-rocky, but it comes packaged in such a, uh, an accessible way that it has mass appeal. And I think her own attitude, interacting with fans, building a dedicated fan base, understanding the memes, it's such an asset to have Suki Waterhouse reclaims status as meme page admin. And even just uh, one of her one of her fans saying, so are you watching us and just laughing? And she goes, always. I, I think 
when you have an attitude like that, when you're as successful as Suki, and you're still individually replying to fans, taking time for people, clearly putting a lot of love and care into your art, you are headed for incredibly great things indeed. Because that's what Billie Eilish was doing before she blew up as well. So, big shout out to Zuki Waterhouse. Maybe I'll be completely wrong, but whether I am or not, her music is absolutely incredible. She doesn't need my help to be a world successful artist. But if you've never listened to her before, obviously, go listen to her now. Give her a follow on Spotify. Support her music. Follow on Twitter because the meme content is there. And if you want to hear more great new music... Check out, check out my show on Twitch, which is 6 p.m. every Monday, and, and sub to this YouTube channel because um, it helps me out and I'm trying to monetize. Peace out, guys, and always remember to bring a handbag wherever you go, especially if you're Suki Waterhouse. You just, it just means that it's easier to carry things. Like, it's so simple. I, I don't know how it becomes so complicated to, to do that.